Hello class, in this video, we will be covering the review for test one, which is over chapters one, two, and three. Now this is part one of the review. So the first test review and the only test review that is split up into two parts is the review for test one. All the other reviews for test two, test three, test four, um, those reviews will all be just one assignment. This is the only assignment where there are two parts and it really has a lot to do with just seeing different versions of the same kind of problems so that regardless of which version you see on the actual test, you will have been exposed to multiple different versions. So you should be able to do the one version that you end up getting on the test, okay? So I'm gonna go through this first part. The first part is uh, 20 problems. And then the second part I believe was about 26 problems. So I will cut this video into two parts just because um, I like to keep the videos under 20 minutes or at least around that mark just so that they're not too lengthy and overwhelming. Um, and so then I, um, I highly doubt I'll be able to cover all 20 questions in <laughs> less than 20 minutes, but we'll, we'll try to get there as, as soon as possible. So for this particular problem, I do have the steps by hand. So if you wanted to see that, you could but I am gonna type these in the calculator because you are allowed to use the calculator while taking the test. And um, it's just a lot faster to compute these values that way. Um, doing it by hand is not necessarily a requirement, just so long as you know how to get the values. So I do end up with seven over 30, like it says here. Then I'm gonna enter this one. So that's a negative symbol five over six, then this is a subtraction because it's between two numbers. So subtract, oops, I did not type that in there correctly. So delete that, type in the six, go to the side, and then I'm gonna hit the minus sign. Um, fraction one over six, go to the right. Now this is another subtraction, but following it is a negative number. So I'm gonna do parentheses in the negative fraction seven over 12 and close that parentheses and that is the end of the problem so i'm going to hit enter and i get negative 5 over 12 which is the response here when done by hand now you can always stop the video and view review the solution by hand and if you have questions you can ask me through text um, but you're not expected to do it by hand okay i just want to make that clear in case people are thinking that they have to do it the way i did you don't I just give it to you for extra reference, okay? Because I do have some people that will want to know how to do it by hand. Um, so this first number is a negative 0 0.37, then it's a minus 1.9, then it's a minus a negative number. So parentheses negative 0 0.41 and close the parentheses. So if it is the only symbol in between two numbers, it is a minus sign. But if you've got, the number in the front with minus, and there's nothing in front of that minus, then this is not a minus symbol, this button. It's actually a negative symbol, which is this button. And if you do have um, a minus and then another negative symbol next to it, like two of them, the first one is a subtraction, but the second one is a negative. Even if this was a plus sign and then a negative, you would use the plus operation for the first one and then the negative symbol down here for the second one. I just wanna make that clear. I think someone had asked that in one of the discussion videos. So on to the next one, we're gonna do parentheses five times two close and square minus five times two square. So it looks exactly like it does on my paper. Instead of dots, it shows little asterisks, but regardless, it's the same thing. So I'm gonna hit enter and the answer is 80. Um, for number five, Let's go ahead and do number five here. So for number five, we've got, let me put this on the other side so you can see the calculator better. There we go. So for number five is gonna be four parentheses two minus four close and an exponent of three, get down, and then minus eight parentheses seven minus nine close, and then raise to the power three and get down. So it does look exactly like it does in the paper. I'm gonna hit enter 
and I do get 32. Now we're going to do this next one. The front guy is a negative. So negative 3 squared plus 3. And instead of a bracket, we can only use parentheses. 8 divided by another parentheses. 4 minus 6. Close the parentheses and then close the bracket. So I'm going to hit enter. And I do get the response negative 21. We'll move on to the next set of problems. So here we have number seven. Again, the first number is negative. So negative fraction seven over two. Then a parentheses fraction one over two. Close that parentheses, then a plus sign fraction four over nine. And then a division symbol and fraction seven over six. Now that does look exactly like it does on the paper up there. So I'm gonna hit enter. And I do get the same answer, negative 115 over 84. Now we're gonna try this one. Notice that it's got three different grouping symbols, but I only have one in my calculator. So it's a parentheses for this brace, a parentheses for this bracket, and a parentheses for the parentheses. Then I can type in 10, oops, 10 minus 12, and I can close the parentheses, minus four, I can close the bracket, minus two, I can close the brace, and then I can square. And it does, um, it is what was on my paper, okay? So I'm gonna hit enter, and I do get the same value, 64. So for number nine, notice that it's one giant fraction. So when I start, I need to start with that fraction button. And then I can enter all of the top and then all of the bottom. So once I have all of that in there and it looks exactly like it does on my paper, I'm gonna hit enter and I have an error. Where's my error? Oh, I have two plus signs, that's why. Delete, so six plus eight. And it says, oh, it says divide by zero error because you cannot divide by zero. When you see this divide by zero error in your calculator, that means that the answer is undefined, which is exactly what we stated when we did the problem, okay? So if you get divide by error, when you try to type it in, that means that the answer is actually undefined. And it's undefined because you cannot divide by zero. So I'm gonna quit out of that or just hit clear. And then I'm gonna clear all of that because I can't, I can't do the function in the calculator. So now in this problem, they give us the expression and they ask us to evaluate it at this particular X value. So when I plug in that X value, I do have to use parentheses every time I plug in the number. So notice that this X will become a negative four in parentheses. This X will also become a negative four in parentheses. And then I would just type all of this in my calculator and hopefully I get that negative 77. So negative three from the front, parentheses, negative four, close, square. Now this is not a minus sign because there's nothing in between the three and the, the parentheses, okay? So when it's in the parentheses, it's considered a negative just like it's a negative four up there. Now I'm gonna do plus six parentheses, negative four, close, and then minus five. And when I hit enter, I do get that negative 77. Similarly for number 11, I'm plugging in seven into this denominator and I'm plugging in three into that denominator. This one, I didn't use the calculator just because I know that 14 divided by seven is two and 21 divided by three is seven, and then I could add those in my head, not a big deal. But if you don't even wanna bother thinking about it, um, whether or not you can do it in your head, you can simply type everything in the calculator and it will pop out the same nine, okay? Now, number 12, very similar. So I plugged in the seven in parentheses, I plugged in the five in parentheses, and the same thing, five for y downstairs and seven for x downstairs. So I'm gonna enter this whole fraction, one big fraction, two parentheses seven, minus, because the minus is not in the parentheses, 
So it's this symbol, not the negative. So minus parentheses five plus nine over two parentheses five minus parentheses seven. So when I hit enter, I do get the value six. So moving on. Now, these problems that have variables in there, we cannot use the calculator to do the whole problem, okay? I can, if I don't know what two times five is, I can do that in the calculator. So two times five X means I would multiply the numbers and drag the X along. So two times five is 10 and the X is dragged along. Then two times two, positive two times positive two is this positive four. And since this two was being added, the result would either have to be added or subtracted. But since I got a positive four, that is why it's being added. And then this subtract three or minus three at the end just comes over. Then I can combine my like terms because these two values are both constants. They don't have any letters on them. And so I can combine those together. And a positive four take away three is a positive one. And again, there was a plus sign in between these things. So I do have to add or subtract my positive one. And since it's a positive, that's why I'm adding the one. Similarly, in here, you have to work from the innermost parentheses, work your way out. So I do have to do this first. So essentially, I need to distribute this negative. You can think of it as a negative one, which so I've written the little ghost one in there. But a negative times a positive 2y is a negative 2y. And because it's negative, I use the minus sign because that's what that was. Then the negative times a negative is a positive. And so I used a plus because again, this is supposed to be subtracting these two terms. So when I get my signs, they either need to be addition or subtraction. Once I finish that, I notice that this constant and this constant can be combined. So positive five plus four is this positive nine and the negative two y comes down. But I can't combine these because one has a y and one doesn't. So I'm gonna go on and continue distributing, okay? So now I'm gonna distribute this negative two. But remember, this is like a minus. It's saying two minus two times all that. So because this is a minus symbol on the outside, when I distribute that minus two in, I'm going to have to use plus or minus in my results. So a negative two times a negative two y is a positive four y, which is why I used a plus sign. Then a negative two times a positive nine is a negative 18, and that's why I used a minus sign. But then I can still combine these two constants, and two take away 18 is actually a negative 16. And because that was a minus sign, um, you can write, you have to write minus 16 and not just negative 16. Okay, um, so when you're multiplying, the minuses act like negatives. When you're adding and subtracting, the negatives act like minuses, okay? And same thing for signs. When you're uh, multiplying, they're positives, but then when, you're, when you have to write a whole term, it's either gonna be, a, it's probably gonna be a plus sign. So let's distribute these. Negative two times four X is negative eight X. Negative two times negative four is going to be a positive eight, so plus eight. Two times three X is six X. Two times two is a positive four. And this minus three came along for the ride. Then these two can be combined. Positive four take away three is a positive one. So you didn't combine the X's, so the X's just came over. And you cannot combine X's and non-X's, so this is the final result. Similarly, for number 17, we're gonna distribute the eight. So I get 48Y minus 24. And then we're gonna distribute this negative, which turns both of these into negative, which means now I'm subtracting three Y and subtracting six. I can combine my like terms, 48Y take away three Y, these mean we're 45 ones. And then negative 24 take away six is actually negative 30. So the first one that I'm doing is a 24. So I'm gonna say negative 24 in my calculator. Negative 24, because it is the first thing that I'm typing in, which means I cannot type a minus sign. I have to type in a negative. And then I'm going to subtract six. And I get negative 30, okay? So, 
Next one is a little bit more complicated. Um, you're going to combine all of your Ks, and I symbolized all of the terms that have K with like a little block. And so then in the calculator, what I did is I did 6 over 5, and the next coefficient is minus 2, and then the next coefficient is plus 2 fifths. And so I entered all of those coefficients in, and so the new coefficient for K is negative 2 fifths. Then for the constants, which are the, the, the terms that don't have letters, I typed those in as well. So positive 8 fifths plus 2 fifths um, minus 5. And I ended up with the negative 3, which is why I wrote minus 3. Because remember, all of these were added, added, and subtracted. So my result needs to be added or subtracted. And because it's a negative, it's subtracted. Okay, moving on to number 19, I'm going to distribute these. So five times three Y is 15 Y, five times negative five is negative 25. Positive three times positive two Y is positive six Y. Positive three times positive two is a positive six. Now, 15 Y plus six Y is 21 Y and negative 25 plus six is negative 19. Now for number 20, we're talking about um, inequality symbols. Now I cannot graph the inequality when it's like this. I do have to have the X on the left-hand side. So if I want to reverse this over, this symbol in the middle has to reverse over as well. So notice that it's not facing the same direction as it was before, and the two values are not on the same sides as they were before. This statement is equivalent to this statement. Okay, and now that I have it like this, it says that my x values are greater than or equal to negative five halves. So I marked negative five halves, greater than would be to the right, and because it has the bar, it would be a solid dot or bracket, okay? So this would be the graph of this inequality. Now, if the problem asked me to write the interval for the inequality, I would start from the left part of this region to the right part of the region. So the left part would have negative five halves with that bracket, comma, and then all the way to the right would eventually go toward positive infinity. So for number 21, here, this one's straightforward. The X is in between three and seven. So I marked three and seven on the number line and shaded in between them. Now the three has a bar, so it's a solid dot with a bracket opening toward the shaded region. Here the seven does not have a bar, so it's an open dot with the parentheses, again, facing the shaded region. So this is the graph of the inequality. If they want the interval for the inequality, it would be three with the bracket, comma, seven with the parentheses. Now number 22 has these two statements and I have to put them together. So what I do is I graph them individually first, and sometimes the my math labs uh, program makes you do that as well. So I graph X greater than or equal to negative two, but I also have the value negative eight that I'm gonna have to put together with this. So what I do for all three, even though it's not necessary for these two, I do it with all three so that it can line up perfectly when I have to give my solution. So I mark both of these numbers on, on all three number lines. The first part's number line, the second part's number line, and then everything together um, number line. So negative eight is actually on the left of negative two. So I had to mark these on the number line and then I just repeated it for all three lines. So the first one says X is greater than or equal to negative two. So I started at negative two and went everything greater to the right. And because it had a bar, it had to be a solid dot or a bracket facing that shaded region. Then for the statement X is less than negative eight, um, I had to shade everything to the left of negative eight, okay? And because there's no bar, the end value should have an open dot or an open parentheses facing toward the shaded region. Now, when it has the word or, you're basically transposing both of these solutions onto one number line. So when I place them both on the single same number line, you actually have two pieces of an interval. So you have from negative infinity to negative eight, both with parentheses, and then negative two to positive infinity, but the negative two has a bracket. And to tell the reader that both of these pieces is part of the solution, you do have to use the union symbol in between. 
So for number 23, it's a lot like number 21. You shade between negative five and three. This side does not have a bar, so it should be an open dot or parentheses facing the shaded region. And this value three does not have a bar, so it also will have an open dot and a parentheses facing the shaded region. This is the graph of the inequality. If you want the interval of the inequality, it would be five with the parentheses and then three with the parentheses and a comma in between. For number 24, it's a lot like number 22. So again, I'm gonna graph both of these numbers on the same number line for all three lines. One for the first statement, another line for the second statement, and then a final line for the solution. So X is less than or equal to negative nine means I'm gonna shade everything to the left of negative nine. And because of the bar, it's gonna be a closed dot or a bracket. Now for the second statement, it says X is greater than or equal to six. So from six, I'm gonna shade everything to the right. And because of the bar, I'm gonna put a solid dot or a bracket. Now for the solution, I'm gonna transpose both of those graphs onto the same number line. And I end up with two separate regions as my answer. So from negative infinity to negative nine with a bracket at negative nine, and then six to infinity, but with a bracket at six, and that's my interval. And to tell the reader that both parts are part of your solution, you do have to have the union symbol in between. So for number 25, they give you a bunch of points and they ask you to determine the ordered pairs. So remember, ordered pairs is important because the first number represents the x value and the second number represents the y value. This is the x axis and this is the y axis. So when I'm looking for the coordinates of A, I'm gonna say one, two, positive direction for x. So I'm gonna have a positive two x value and then up one, two, three, four, five, six. So then I'm gonna have a positive six for my y value. For B, it has a negative three X value and a negative three Y value. For C, it has a negative six X value and no Y value. The Y value is zero here, it's on the X axis. Then for D, the X value is positive three, but the Y value is negative five. For E, the X value is negative six, but the Y value is positive five. <coughs> Excuse me. And then for F, um, the X value is zero here centered and the points on the Y axis at positive six. Okay, for number 26, it asks us to do the opposite. So they give us the coordinates of the points and then they want us to plot those points on the number line. So for two, one, I'm gonna go over two for X and positive one for Y. For B, I'm gonna go negative five, for x and then negative four for y. For c, I'm going to go negative three for x and zero for y. For d, I'm going to go negative one and then 9.2 is 4.5. So I had to go, um, actually that point is incorrect. d is not right. I have negative one, but then I have to go one, two, three, four, and a half. So D should actually be here. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what is going on this semester, but every time I have to talk for an extended amount of time, my throat is starting to get like really dry. I think I need to drink more um, hot tea to help with that. But anyway, getting off topic. Um, for E, we're going to go negative one for X and then up two. So that one is also incorrect. And then finally for F, um, zero. So I do not go left or right, but I do go down two units. <coughs> Excuse me. So there you have it. We do have all of those points plotted. Okay, for number 27, we have write an equation for the line shown. So they have this equation here. In order for me to write the equation of the line, I do need M and I do need B. Now B is the y-intercept. And so I do see that the y-intercept is here at a positive one y value. So that means my B is going to equal one. 
So when I plug in a number there, it's going to be one. Now for M, I have to find the slope between these two numbers. So I wrote the coordinates of each number, zero, one, and here is one and seven. Then I use the slope formula for these two points. So Y2 take away Y1, and then X2 take away X1. So then I get six over one, which is just six. So my M is six, excuse me. And then this is the equation for that line. <clears throat> now the last problem in this part one of the test one review is um, same direction. So they give us the line here and they want us to write the equation. So I do need um, the M and the B. So the B is the y-intercept and the y-intercept happens to be up here at positive six. So that will be the B value that I use there. And then the M, I need to know the coordinates of both points. So this top point is zero six. The bottom point is actually one and negative four. And so then I use my slope formula. So y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. I ended up with negative 10 over one, which is negative 10. So if my M is negative 10, I just replace the M with negative 10. And then I get this as my um, equation of the line. So that is the end of this video. I will come back and record a separate video for the part two of the test one review.